What is up, people? Good morning to everybody. I hope everyone is having a spectacular day. I know I am. And today, I thought I'd take you guys for kind of a quick jaunt to meet a, uh, a new guy into my circle. I'm going to introduce you to a gentleman named Kirk Taylor, who is an actor. Kirk has done a lot of stuff over the years. Uh, he was in Full Metal Jacket. He's worked with Charlie Bronson. And he was also in a movie called The Last Dragon. You may remember this movie. I know I certainly do. It's one of the movies I grew up with. Like a cool guy. And we're going to find out all about it. You guys ready? Let's do this! This is Kirk. Uh, I just told you guys about this guy, and we're gonna drive a PCH and talk about you because okay. you got a lot of stuff going on. I got a lot going. On. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But you have an amazing history too, and uh, and now you're you're helping other actors to be better actors. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really cool. And you're also a musician. Yeah. I want to hear more about that, which is really cool. So what are we driving today? We are driving our pretty new 2017 Kia Nero, which uh -huh. is a. Uh, we are thrilled about 51 miles per gallon. I mean, it's, you can drive all day and never go. It's crazy how yeah. little you have to fill it up, and yeah. it, it's a it, you know it's a new one. So we leased it, yeah, because we weren't sure how the new technology was going to be with Kia. This is our first hybrid, right? Right. And now we wish we should have bought it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. cool. That's cool. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. So let's get in the car. We'll poke around. We'll head up north. Uh, we'll also stop and get a photo of you with the car. Cool. For the newspaper. Cool. All kinds of stuff we're doing. So stay tuned. Excellent. Why this car? Kia makes a lot of stuff. Why this one? This is their first foray into um, hybrid. And I was thinking, 51 miles per gallon? If I can get 51 miles per gallon, I don't care what you Dude, you could drive for a month and not use it. Give me a mule and a car. <laughs> You've done a lot of movies. Yes. A lot of fun stuff. Yes, You've worked sir. with a lot of really interesting people over the years. Yes, yeah. Oh, running, yeah. Right? I, I definitely have. And people I, that are no longer around, actually. Yeah. Some of the some of the heavyweights, you know, like um, Charles Bronson was a wow. He was just a wonderful guy to work with. He was very. I mean, he has a tough guy persona, but he was a very kind man. And yeah. I remember the first time I met him, I took a. Um, I asked him to take a picture. I got a picture of me. I have a great shot of me and Bronson. I'm in my 20s. And he's very kind to me. And he, he sees his wife, Jill Ireland. He says, Jill, come over here. I want you to meet Kirk Taylor. He's playing one of the heavies. And I remember being called the heavy by Charles Bronson, dude. It's like, <laughs> I'm a heavy. Yeah, what was the movie? Uh, Death Wish 3. Wow. We shot it in London. In, as you kind of review your career, I've been thinking about things a lot. Mm -hmm. doing a, do more and more publicity for some film, the, the revival film that's coming out, and some yeah. other projects. And as I've been looking back, it's sort of like you're you're amazed. You're like, wow, I rubbed elbows with Charles Bronson. Yeah, that's crazy. And then that's after crazy. and after the Bronson film, and I played one of the heavies, and I, you know, as most villains in a Charles Bronson film, yeah. you don't make it to the sequel. <laughs> You don't see bad guys from one film to another in a bronze and yeah, kills yeah, them all. Yeah. You can send away for a very special gun to kill me. It was a, with a YLD 475, which is a, it's a modified, it's like a rifle cartridge that wow. shoots. So when they when they killed me and had to put this plate on my, I put, put a bulletproof vest on me. If that scared me, I was like, wait, 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 wait. For a blank. For a blank. Yeah. I said, really? Yeah. I said, well, we have to put a metal plate as well. I said, you're going to put a metal plate on top of the bulletproof vest. Okay, now we're going to use five charges and five blood packs because the wound going in would be so large. He said, push me, push me hard. I was like, okay, sir. And so I pushed him. He said, no, 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 push me hard. He told me like three times. I said, all right. Okay. I pushed him into the fence <laughs> and he pulled that gun on and it took like five minutes for it to come out. It was so long. <laughs> when I got up after that, they said cut and they showed me this heavy, heavy leather vest, the biker's vest. That right. Shredded with blood pouring out the back of it. I almost passed out. Like wow. I literally, I just said, yeah. Okay. I can't say I've ever interviewed somebody who was killed by Charlie Bronson, but that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's From pretty that, cool. I was in London and I heard that 
um, Stanley Kubrick was still casting Full Metal Jacket, which didn't make sense because he had been casting it for three years. Wow. Two, three years. And so they told me, they said, Bronson's here. And I said, I mean, um, uh, Kubrick is here. And I was like, no, can't be. He said, he's casting Full Metal. I said, no, it can't be. I already sent a tape in for that. Found that he was. I called his office. I get the number. Yeah. And I called and started. I just said, excuse me. We have a wonderful actor here, Mr. Kirk Taylor, from New York, and he's Mr. Bronson loves him. We would love to send him over for you. He may be a big that's, asset. That's you telling me. I'm, tell, I'm doing that. I'm playing my own, own British Asian. And they said, sure, send him over. <laughs> so I went in. I went in to meet Kubrick. Now, he wasn't there. But they said, we're going to videotape you. Stan's going to watch it later. I said, okay. And I said, can I tell Mr. Kubrick a story? And they said, sure. I said, Mr. Kubrick, it was story. T- it was show and tell at school, and it was little Johnny's turn to talk about his family. And so the two said, little Johnny, tell us about your family. He said, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I had a brother, right, who went to Vietnam. He got shot in the ass. She said, oh, 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 Johnny. No, 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 no. No, we don't speak that way. Say, say wrecked him. Wrecked him. He said, wrecked him nothing. It killed him. <laughs> Project be out April uh, Easter of 2019, and it's a it's the wildest thing. It is a wild film. It's it's kind of a retelling of the Gospel of John as a musical, hmm. but it's sort of like if you want to describe it, you would call it um, Jesus Christ Superstar and Godspell meet 2001 Space Odyssey. <laughs> God, my brain just exploded. Because it starts off as a guy walking into a theater, get ready to do a play. Yeah, this guy walks in with his guitar. And um, he starts getting ready for this play, and you see dancers stretching and stuff. It's on stage. Mm-hmm. He puts on the garb. It's a black guy. His name is Molly Music, and he plays Jesus, right? Yeah. And he looks into the mirror, and something supernatural happens, and he goes into the first century, and now he's in first century Israel. Wow. And it, it goes back and forth between stage, first century, then it shoots to the future, and they're they're in L.A. in like 2050 basically talking about the timelessness of the message right the timelessness of the message of this christ messiah guy right mm. jesus and so we have shaka khan in it harry lennox plays Punch, punctious pilot great uh michelle williams from destiny's child uh wendy raquel from the steve harvey show years ago and uh don lewis i mean we have a great cast fantastic and- keys and I uh, used to play trumpet I still have it mm. uh, and I've been I've been doing a lot of composing uh, singing studio singing stuff I was working mm-hmm. with Scott B Smith one of Andre Crouch's producers and we did a whole album it hasn't come out yet but nice. I've been writing my own material I come from Medical a line life. a line of um, very very talented musicians in fact my uncle John unfortunately he, he wrote one of the most famous songs that you you don't know he's written he's the most famous composer you don't know you know ah. because his melodies have literally been sung around the world but people don't know his name. Wow. And he wrote a song called Blue Rain. He played it at a piano player's party, and his friend Errol Garner liked it and stole the music and lyrics. I mean, stole the music and melody. Right. And gave somebody else the lyrics to do, and it became Misty. Wow. Look at me. I'm as helpless as a kitten from a tree. And then I've been singing in productions in Revival. I sing. Fantastic. Got a great tune in there. And so I've really separated the music. I came here originally, and first time in California. 
1993, <clears throat> I did five guys named Mo, the Broadway tour of that show. It left Broadway, came here, and did it for here for three and a half months at the Doolittle Theater. into acting in high school. I had already decided I was never going to audition for the play, even though I had kind of a hunger for it, wanting to be on stage. But I decided that the drama teacher was too scary. Miss Hardy, she was scary. <laughs> if he, if, I mean, she didn't pull any punches. I heard her scream. Yeah. She said, boring! Yeah. So we wanted to ride home because it was raining. I said, me and your brother want to ride home. She said, well, yeah, if you audition for the school play. I was like, I'm not auditioning for the school play. She said, well, okay, well. I said, are you serious? She said, if you don't audition, that's it. Yeah. That literally changed my life because I went in, sang for Miss Hardy. I got the lead. Wow. She got a part in the chorus. Yeah. She was very upset about that. <laughs> I uh, decided, Miss Hardy helped me decide to go to NYU and Lee Strasberg was still alive. Sure. Stella Adler. Brando's teacher, I mean, and I got to study with those guys. Wow. Speaking of really great acting, let's talk about Last Dragon. Because, honestly, that was the movie that I remember the most. I love that film. <laughs> and you know, we did a 30th anniversary, hard to believe. Yeah. 30 years. Did you, did you have any martial arts training when yeah, you did Yeah, I did. It? I had a brown belt in Shotokan. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, I was in funny, it was one of those stories where I'm, I just pay attention on set. I'm not ever just sitting there thinking, because I was a special ability actor. Just yeah. fight, get knocked out or whatever. Right. And one of the guys, uh, Michael Schultz, who's a director out of NEC, Negro Ensemble Company in New York, yeah. he's a great director, and he was there, and he walked in for the first scene of Shonuff and his, his six bodyguards. Yeah. And he looks at this little white dude, and he says, did I tell you not to shave? He's like, oh, well, I had an audition today. He said, get rid of him. He said, who else can do it? And wow. he's sitting there going, mm. Yeah. And the guy tore and said, well, Kirk can actually do the martial arts, and he's an actor, too. Yeah. And they hired me to do that. And wow. it was it was a joy. Even when I watched that film, there's some films that have something. Yeah. And there's something about the innocence of this kid, because he really was a, a, a naive young kid. Yeah. And, sure. and a great martial artist. Sure. So there's something about the film that moves me every time I watch it. I said, they got something. Yeah. That was cool. Oh, it was so much fun. It's great like, stuff. What a different type of format and, and vibe down here and yeah it's fun it's a, it's a great feeling i would tell them two things first of all search your heart and make sure that's something you really want to do yeah. because it's not an easy profession it has to be something that's burning in you that you feel you have a gift that you have to give mm -hmm. and then to learn your craft yeah i mean study train these days the, the acting is getting to higher and higher levels of professionalism people right. knowing how to work i mean they won't even put you in front of the camera sometimes if you haven't done it already which is kind of a yeah. contradiction i mean you need yeah. to be in front of the camera to to, to start off right so really to to be passionate about it to make sure search your heart and make sure that's something you're really supposed to do yeah, yeah do what you love love what you do yeah so where can people find you online oh okay well i i'm, I'm uh, pretty new to the social media scene but okay. i have a my, my own website now which we're Sweet. still building but it's called <laughs> kirk taylor official .com. Okay. okay instagram and twitter i am kirk taylor all right very simple. simple there so it goes go friend stay him up in touch. Hit uh, me up. thank you man very cool thank all right you, cool